So Paul, you're really quite widely known for suggesting to the wider world that we've had too simplistic a view about evolution and how it shapes individuals and how individuals shape their own, or at least the evolution of their species. And that's codified mainly in what's called developmental systems theory, right? Yeah. What, what yeah. is developmental systems theory? So that was my attempt to sum up as a theory the idea of a lot of scientists that I've admired who've worked on the development of behavior in humans and animals since the 1950s and some earlier. Um, and these are people who think that how do you, you've evolved over millions of years to have some adaptive behavior. And of course, to do that, you've got to inherit a whole bunch of genes in order to be able to reproduce that behavior. But the idea is that you also inherit your environment. So when a, when a, um, a uh, uh, an animal lays a fertilized egg, they don't just lay the fertilized egg and, and wander off. They lay it in exactly the right place at the right time. So if they're a crocodile, they bury it at the right temperature so that the temperature will produce a 50-50 ratio of males and females. Um, if you're a, in Australia, we have this fantastic bird, uh, lives in everyone's backyards and destroys the garden. And it destroys the garden because the males, well, this what's, is, what's the name of the bird? it's called a brush turkey. Brush and it looks a bit like an American turkey, but it's not genetically related to American turkeys at all. Um, and the brush turkey digs up your garden to build a huge pile of rotting vegetation. Mm. And all the, the things you carefully planted. Yeah, it digs up, yeah, they love wood chip. Uh, you put wood chip down, that's just, wow, this is so easy to scratch <laughs> into a huge heap on top of your flower bed. Right. So people kind of don't like them, but they're, they're very cool birds. And the male will make a big heap, and then the females will come and they'll look at the heap and they'll say, that's a pretty impressive heap. You're a pretty good male. You've managed to defend this territory and build this heap two meters high. That's what that's like, six feet, yeah. Um, this, you know, you're a good male, so I'm gonna lay my, I'm gonna mate with you, and then I'm gonna lay my eggs in your heap. Mm. And I'm gonna just go off carefree and, and, you know, have a good time, and you're gonna have to incubate the eggs. And every day, the male this has this- a real stay-at-home dad. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. He's, uh, um, well, he's, he's a, we have a joke in Australia that he's, uh, um, like a lot of human beings, he cares a lot about the unborn child, but doesn't pay much attention to them after they're born. I see. Um, <laughs> which is a, Slightly, yeah, okay. sad thing. So what he does is he, um, he fights to keep the predators away. We have these big lizards um, called goannas, and they're like a meter long, and he'll chase after them and peck at them and shake, you know, flap his wings at them. He'll chase away your dog. He's very, you know, he's really a good father. Mm -hmm. And every day he puts his beak into the mound and gets a sense of if it's too hot or too cold. And if it's too hot, he scrapes some of the litter off to make really? it cool. And if it's too cold, he piles some more That's on top. Story. And when the little babies are born, they're, they look like a baby chicken, a bit bigger, um, little, very precocial. They can so, run around. So these nests and he are says, I've got no more interest in you anymore. Air conditioned and heated based on the father yep. sensing the temp So the father's the thermostat. Yep. And the policeman. And the idea is, what well, development of the systems theory is the idea, of how does a brush turkey make a brush turkey? Does it do it by copying its DNA? And that's the end of the story. No, it does it by copying its DNA and then regulating large bits of the environment. So the environment in most animals is actually a very specific environment that your parents built and gave to you. So you're not just in an environment, you... <coughs> you inherit you, it. And you create it and your parents create it. They inherit an environment. And that evolution designed environments the same way it defined designed genes to produce normal development. Well, in this case, evolution shaped brush turkey brains mm -hmm. to make mounds and set the temperature just right. Yep. Um, and of course, if you look at uh, some other famous examples with other birds, um, it'll shape things like cultural traditions. So um, uh, one of my favorite examples, there's a, a group of biologists at the University of uh, Indiana in Bloomington um, who spent many years showing that uh, you have a the little North American cowbird, the little brown-headed cowbird. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they learn their song, that you're like so many birds, the uh, male learns his song as he grows up. But unlike most birds, he doesn't learn it from his father because the bird's a parasite. It lays its eggs in the nest of another species. He never sees his father. Mm. Instead, he learns it by trying a whole bunch of different songs and seeing whether the females in the flock like them. And a bit like a human teenager requires his taste for music, he just basically goes whatever for whatever, whatever like. music the girl likes. <laughs> okay. oh. 
So that's a kind of selection process going it's on. A, it's it? a system designed by natural selection to get these guys to sing the normal song of their species. And the females know what that song is. It's culturally transmitted. They learn what, they, there's regional dialects. The, uh, the birds in the southern parts of the US sing different dialect from the birds in the north. So the females work out what it is from cultural transmission in the flock, yeah. and the males learn it from the females. And there's similar work on indigo buntings, I recall, from a colleague of mine at University of Michigan. Uh -huh, I didn't know that. I should look that up. Very subtle differences, even between birds that are a few miles away. And you can tell where a bird is from its song. Uh, in dialect. Yeah, no, dialects are, are universal in uh, passerine songbirds. Yeah. yeah, so that's, uh, I mean, of the 3,000 something species of passerine songbirds, about a third of all the birds in the world, you get that kind of song learning. So let's wrap up mm. this section by you telling us how is this different from plain old naive view of evolution mm -hmm. changing these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we think of evolution as changing gene frequencies over time. And developmental systems theory thinks that evolution is change in developmental systems over time, where developmental systems are genes and epigenes and these highly specific environments that are shaped by natural selection. I think we should go on and talk about epigenetics. What do you think? Indeed, it's an important topic. Good. Mm.